it's tough to kind of critique in our kind of the platform we're doing comedy mm. um, because comedy is kind of a subjective thing. What is funny, what's not, and it's hard for people even want to be interested to watch what we have to say about comedy. Mm. But I want to get a chance to talk about one that I think would be interesting for all kind of demographics. So let's talk about drugstore June. Yeah, grab your pills, take two, and call us in the morning. Welcome back to the show, everybody. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Gothy from GoatFilmReviews.com. And I'm Nick, and I'm not medicated. Yet. We, we know yet, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe caffeine. Uh, thanks for watching, and thanks for finding us. And for loyal fans, thank you for continuing to support the show. Another way you can support the show, yes, we do. We have a Patreon. Check that out for some great deal, great content. We just unloaded some more stuff on there as well, exclusively for content, uh, Patreon members. Mm. And if you become a member, there's an opportunity to tell us what movies you will review in the future. With, of course, a shout-out to you as well. Um, both Kyle and I are members of the Minnesota Film Critics Alliance. Check out the webpage for critic reviews as well as ours. And today we're talking about another comedy from this year, 2024. Uh, what was her name? Esther Povitsky? Esther po po I think I've seen her <laughs> doing some late night show, maybe Jimmy Fallon or something like that. Mm. So, yeah, what's so, going on? After her pharmacy is robbed, quirky and odd June decides to find the culprit, with, which leads her on an odyssey of self-undiscovery that yeah. might just help her heal from her previous breakup. Okay, so June had a, she has an ex-boyfriend and a boyfriend named Davey, and that's Haley Joe's Osmond. I understand it's hard to, when he breaks up with you. Yeah, yeah that would hurt me too. <laughs> that would hurt me too. Um, so, uh, you'll see a lot of familiar faces. Bill Burroughs in this, Be Beverly D'Angelo, James Remar, I think Dexter's dad, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I always also think the, the Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors. The Warriors, right. <laughs> um, and then, um, and other than Haley Joe Osment, I'm thinking minus the uh, other Bobby one. Lee plays Bobby the pharmacist. Lee? He was yeah. the reason I got excited about the film. Was I immediately texted my wife, who is a pharmacist, and I said, well, I know what we're watching as soon as we can. Because uh, there was this image of Bobby Lee behind the counter, and I, I was I was hoping that he would be in a lot of the film. <laughs> right. So it's a vessel pretty much of kind of self-awareness. And comedy is always, I always, my thesis is comedy is a little mixture of juvenile. Mm -hmm. And you have it very much with June, who doesn't have the motivation or drive or interest to grow up. Why do it when you're getting... Everything you want in life, <laughs> right? You know? Right. So she's not really in for the money, rather than for finance or even to move out, but successful followership of her social media fans, mm -hmm. and you can see through the tra trailer. I generally see a nice sweetness to this character, even though she's a rotten pain in the butt. Oh yeah, I th yeah. The thing about her is, it's tough because I find that the comedy doesn't land as well with her. I think it lands that particularly well with everyone around her. Like, I think there was a case where it just felt like the jokes landed with everyone else in the film. But whenever she was on screen, I just kind of found her very frustrating. Um, and maybe that's kind of the point of her character is that she is supposed to be so frustrating because she yeah. isn't moving forward. Um, because she needs a kick in the ass to do so, and she hasn't really accepted that. It's almost like failure to launch. Like, what's yeah. the, what, I, if I don't have any motivation to do anything, why would I move forward? And it's tough to tough to critique comedy because we don't want to we want to see the laughs of somebody not moving forward and growing up and doing the accomplishments but she thinks she's doing an adult thing about solving who robbed the pharmacy yeah she mm -hmm. like this this is adult life <laughs> right right and the point is we don't really care who robbed the pharmacy we want to enjoy the journey of her trying to have a self-discovery moment that probably never is going to come up yeah, it felt to me like they were aiming for a little bit of a big lebowski vibe to it, where she goes on this journey to get the answer that really doesn't matter. Right. You know, and that she's ultimately kind of ending, coming back right? around we, for it. We figure out at yeah. the end, and it, after you figure it out, it's like, that wasn't the whole point of the movie either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but there's there's a nice uh, convalescence of, I think, I think some really fantastic talent around. I think that's what elevates a lot of what works in the film, is yeah. the, the dedicated, like, bit actor kind of stuff that's going on here. I think Beverly D'Angelo is really funny. If she showed up on someone's uh, like stories on Instagram, I'd be watching more because I love Beverly D'Angelo. Right. Um, you know, James Remar, I think James Remar doesn't get a lot of credit for his comedy chops because he's always in something where people are getting murdered and it's kind of hard to bridge that. But he is pretty funny too. He has a great opening scene in the Pineapple Express movie where I think he really yeah, owns he that kind of dry comedy humor. Yeah. Um, Bobby Lee is fantastic. I think he's brilliant in just about that every deadpan, role. you know, mm -hmm. that deadpan almost 
saying it as a straight man, but it is kind of funny. Like, get your life together. kind of. Yeah, like kind he's of trying to kind of poke and prod. He almost feels like ha- coming at it with a softer touch is going to work, um, and it doesn't seem to. Um, as a writer thing, and I was watching this movie, I was always thinking I would definitely, and Esther Pavisky wrote this, uh, she's a co-writer, I would put somebody as a mere character, somebody that almost seems like a rival to her who acts the same way mm. as a challenge and maybe I should stop doing it. Almost like a competing competition. That might have juiced up a little more of the overall story. Maybe they can I don't know, like the Kelly character, Miranda Cosgrove. Something, something kind of a rivalness to it mm. rather than her own vacuum of her own world and trying to get out. Yeah, and I think because it's difficult to do comedy when you do... Like, I, I think, like, doing live stream comedy, which is, you know, kind of what her character does a lot is she spends a lot of time on her phone. Yeah. It's not as funny because we're not really getting the interaction. Like, we're seeing what she's bringing to it, but we're not seeing the interaction with the people that are watching, the people that are actually on there. We don't know yeah. if she's even popular online or not. Like, we, just, we don't really understand enough about Right, it would be funny if she did all this and it's like, oh, I got 21 subscribers now. Hey, we did for a while. <laughs> right, yeah. That would be a great joke, right? Yeah, After so all I this think effort, it's, yeah. Because I felt like the first half hour of the movie movie that was rough for me because I, I there was so much time where she was by herself with the interactions yeah. I think it got better every time she shared the screen with somebody who was uplifting her performance like particularly when she goes to the bar with Bobby Lee's character and they're like trying to get some leads on this right. I think there were some funny interactions in there I wish that he had been a part of the film more or that there had been more interactions I mean, with like to, Matt Walsh you, you know? have to start with the status quo right yeah I think we spent too much time with her yeah, in that status, we ought to get it. You're stuck in the bedroom, and the bedroom's a mess, and then all the, we get the jokes. right? Yeah, we come back to it. It's like in the opening credits where she goes to the, get ice cream like twice, and I think yeah. the idea is that she's living this monotony, or maybe she does do it both in one day. But we do get a lot of that. We get a lot. Like I think we kind of covered her character in the opening credits. I feel. Well, if you do that comedy, then the bit is she lose. She missed her turn on the exit to get back home. Yeah. And then she goes back and gets in. The, and she goes, "Oh crap, I missed the exit." And then she has, and then get another ice cream. Yeah. And then what took so long? Well, she's more fixated on the ice cream than getting the you know get the getting home on time. Yeah, that would land much more. Fun. I think yeah. most of the comedy in the film that works works because it's it's Esther's character with someone else who's able to throw it back. Yeah, and I think there's some there's some people in the cast that can't do it. And I think there's right. some that can. And that's why and I, that's I say she needs like some a mirror character, somebody yeah. acts and thinks just like her. Yeah, and it's and they act juvenile. They're never going to change. Yeah, like pair her with yeah, pair her with somebody that can that can elevate her character, make her character grow. Because I also yeah. felt like it was missing some of the character growth. Like in the end, I didn't really buy that she made any changes. I don't think there's an life. evolutionary step in her. Yeah, and I feel like we're meant to believe that she's at least changed somewhat. Yeah. Um, because there have been a especially for handling everybody's medication. Yeah, I don't. You don't want somebody that's acting like they're twelve years old. I yeah, I will not share stories. <laughs> <laughs> they're, you know, they're handing out. Like, <laughs> and then they give out advice about medication. Mm-hmm. I like the concept. I really do. It's a refreshing kind of thing. I like the idea where they're going. I think there's a little, the script's a little green in the oven. Yeah. yeah a little dull. Yeah. She worked on it with Nicholas uh, Goosen, who uh, has directed a couple of films. Uh, you might know him from the cinematic masterpiece that is Grandma's Boy from 2006. No, I like the um, dynamic with their brother and sister, the whole how they speak and everything. Well, I think that's yeah. what he did really well with Grandma's Boy, was he had these yeah. elevated, zanier characters that were just kind of so over-the-top stupid that they kind of circled back around, and you yeah. started finding them funny. And I think Grandma's Boy is a perfect example of a of a kind of bad movie that is works really well as a comedy still. Yeah. And I think that's kind of where they're, they're kind of, yeah, they're missing that element of having these characters that are still likable when they come back around. Yeah. And that's kind of where, yeah, that, that screenplay could have updated a few of those things. It could have had more interactions, more characters spending time together which I think is going to become more and more of a difficult thing because we do spend more of our times on our phones. So, like, removing the phone, it's almost like removing the phone in horror films. you got to get the phone out of there well, so if you can have those interactions. If the title is if she works at a drugstore, they have more time with her alone in the drugstore doing stupid stuff and yeah. trying to get away with it. I, I did, like, this This is me critiquing the movie I wanted. I, I was hoping for, like, a pharmacy version of Clerks. Like, right, I was hoping yeah. for, like, more time spent in the drug... Because they call her that. Like, that's how it's titled in the film. Right. But the, the pharmacy doesn't play a lot of actual, like... Role in the film, it right? Could have I would have liked place, drug, you know? pharmacy drugs, yeah, like Kirk's. Yeah, you just set the camera there and see the customers coming in, and you just want to kill them. Yeah, because right. again, I think her best moments in the movie are with Bobby Lee, which yeah. is at the pharmacy. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I would like to see more from it. I think she's got she's got the right beats. I, I like the self-deprecating thing. 
But um, right, if she gets the right beat to it, I think you got to hit with it. Yeah, well, what I keep yeah. thinking about with her, with what she's trying to accomplish, what I feel she's trying to accomplish through the film, is something that was actually accomplished in the horror comedy Bodies, Bodies, Bodies about three, four years ago, where it was kind of making fun of the language, too. It was making fun of, like, yeah. that self-deprecating thing comes back around to, like, how every generation has its kind of stupid things that they go through that changes with the next one. Exactly. And I think that's what she was kind of hinting at with a, an attempt here. I just didn't feel like that came across in a way that it did in, you know, I think a really great little horror comedy like that one. So the only thing that really got me laughed out loud was Bill Burr telling her, "I'll sorry about you." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> in my head, I was saying the same thing, and then I realized, <laughs> yeah. Well, Bill Burr was a producer on the film. It was from his All Things Comedy Company that he worked yeah. on, which actually helps to elevate a lot of smaller. Uh, comedic names into larger places. Shout Studio helped release it. So there's not, some really it, good people that were involved in helping get this movie out. It's not a vulgar film and it's not trashy. I I, I love those kind of things, but it's just kind of maybe maybe you should have gotten by it. Yeah, maybe you should take a real risks and some you know, you know sometimes you got to take out some some R. Right. Um, the movie wasn't rated, so it wasn't like they tried to cut things out for a theatrical run. I think it no. was direct to home video. So um, yeah, I think it just it missed the mark in the comedy aspect, which is frustrating. Um, because I feel like there's if you're gonna swim ideas. in the immaturity and never really change from that, then you need a somebody else to grow. Yeah, we need more. Yeah. I think the self-deprecating stuff didn't work for me as well yeah. as I was hoping it would. Yeah. So that's I think what, that would have been. It. Yeah. Of course, this is what we think: mm-hmm. two grown old men critiquing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I feel like we might be getting old. Right. <laughs> this we this might movie be made me feel that a little bit. I made me feel old. Right. Well, as a Haley Joel Osment stan, I'm still here. So. <laughs> Yeah, so what do you think of our drugstore June? Yeah, let us know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Uh, maybe you disagree with us. It's really funny actually being on Letterboxd because there are a lot of one-star reviews for this film and a lot of five-star reviews for this film, and I just was so I shocked think people at the like, I think people re- like see a little bit of themselves with this character. Yep, and, and it's they'll... further proof that comedy and horror are the two most subjective genres, I, I feel. Yeah. Because what do you like in getting scared? What do you like in getting laughs? And I think that's really hard to do. Um, but, you know, maybe that film is a five-star film for you. Let us know your thoughts down below. Yeah. Um, and what's your favorite, uh, maybe your favorite comedian-turned-actor film? Uh, someone where they were on a stage and now they're on the screen? Let us know in the comments section below. Maybe we'll cover one of those on a future episode. Uh, thank you for joining us. You can find all of my film reviews over at GoFilmReviews.com. You can find my show, the St. Paul Filmcast, anywhere you find podcasts and Go do drugs. His words. <laughs> not, not.